Hey there, Film Buds. Welcome back to the Film Buds podcast. I'm your host, Paul. And I'm Lauren. And uh, it's been a little bit of a minute, but, uh, you know, life happens. Things happen in a a flux, an ebb, and a flow. And uh, and that's just sort of, I guess, the way the cookie crumbles. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the show. Uh, but right now, it's good to be back with y'all. It's been a little while. Uh, dear, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, can't complain, you know. It's a beautiful day. Got some new shirts on. Living the life. <laughs> that's fair. Um, we're, 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 very articulate, Paul. Um, we're both wearing, uh, some Nickelodeon themed shirts. My, my dear wife is in a a, a wonderful SpongeBob themed shirt. Um, and I am in a, a pseudo replica of Uncle Tito shirt from Rocket Power. Um, so it's a, it's a good, it's a good Friday. Um, but not that one. Um. No, that's a different Friday. Yeah. That one's about Jesus. (laughs) Uh, but it's good to be back. It's good to, to be here talking to y'all. We've, we've seen, you know, a few things in between the last episode until now. Um, but honestly, we haven't watched as much lately, like movie wise, you know, we've, we've seen some of the, some of the theatrical releases, you know, Creed 3, stuff like that. But like bread and butter wise usually when you and i have like a moment alone we've been watching like some tv shows more so we've been watching futurama i mean we've we've been watching jeopardy don't lie to the people we've been we've been (laughs) spending each one of our we have we have lately been watching a lot of jeopardy our 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 boring work day you know weekday nights watching jeopardy with the folks you know living living like how i grew up you know, for the, you know, first 20 odd years of my life. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but, uh, no, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, um, I'm excited for tonight's episode. It's, uh, it's all about a horror franchise, you know, that we love talking about horror. And, uh, honestly, Evil Dead is one of my all-time favorite horror franchises out there. Uh, and so to get to talk about Evil Dead Rise tonight is, is very exciting. Um, you are, like, less, I guess, uh, into, I mean, you like it, but you haven't seen, like, everything. You haven't seen, like, the TV show or everything. You've only seen the movies of Evil Dead. Yes, I've, I've only seen the movies. And, I've and seen all of them, though. That's, that's true. When was the first time that you saw the first one? Was it you and... Yeah, it was okay. with you. Okay, that's what I thought. I watched thought. the entire franchise with you. <laughs> so, so, um, if you rewatched a movie, chances are, it was my first time watching that film. <laughs> Fair. Um, no, but I quite, I quite enjoy, um, the films. I saw Evil Dead, like, back in high school college somewhere in there that makes um, sense it's right that's the right age for for a movie like this that's that's when i was watching a bunch of a bunch of those 80s films you know like the goonies and stuff you know really 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 watching the hell out of some pretty in pink <laughs> yeah you know this kind of um edgy you know pseudo independent you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, kind of, um, it's kind of grungy feeling. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, and this was something that I think that I bonded with over, uh, with mad, uh, as well. You know, I think that me and mad started watching the evil dead franchise together. That makes sense. Um, and, um, Overall, I guess what are what are your before we start talking about Evil Dead Rise? What are you, what are some of your opinions on the Evil Dead franchise at large? I think that the at, <laughs> at large, um, I think that the Evil Dead franchise is the funniest thing to hit horror since since I don't know, um, oh gosh, Freddy Krueger. I was about to say it has a certain nightmare on Elm Street sensibility kind of thing going on. Because it's it's almost absurdist. It's 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 um 
just so campy. It's 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 having a great time, and that's I think the the reason why like I enjoy watching them is because I find them absolutely hysterical. It, whether it's it's you know the first one with all of the like props that they're basically using, you know, this all of the 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 the, 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 the sheer um, subject matter, you know, of 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 our our main girl, our our main uh, possessed girl being like you know raped by the forest you know it's 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 ridiculous it's absolutely just sheer and like you go you you look at this and you're like some 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 college film people made this film yeah and you can see it but it's so much better than thanksgiving (laughs) <laughs> and i think that that's the thing that really like seals the deal for this film is the be- that it is it is exactly the same probably amount of budget i don't know i don't know things killing was a cheap movie um but this thing's great you know it has just enough like the the just enough plot you know to keep it going and i think that it's it's a it's a really really fun 80s film like it's just it is you know everything's practical having a good time so good what time. About, like, what about um, the sequels? The sequels have nothing to do with that. The, the <laughs> it's 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 the best. I think that I think that Evil Dead as a franchise is an unserious franchise. I guess because I feel like the the second one is an exact copy and paste of the first one, but now with a better budget. You know, and a little edits, a little tweakage here and there. You know, but this is the same film except this time ex- Ash actually does some stuff. Mm-hmm. Instead of being like our B character, you know, to just like our observant, like horror struck youth that survives. Yeah, he's, he, he, Ash, to your point in the first one, is a little bit of our final girl, right? He's he's a little bit of our, our last person standing who, mm-hmm. once everyone else has been picked off, suddenly is like, oh god, I have to do it? No, literally, he's li- he doesn't do anything for the entire film until he does something. Like, it's it's comedy but evil dead 2 and you and i talked about this my general theory the thing that because there's there's a lot of back and forth about evil dead 2 evil dead 1 is it a remake is it a sequel what is it Mm -hmm. and the current general opinion as best as i can tell is that it is a sequel my opinion wink (laughs) <laughs> is that, um, you know, Evil Dead 1, spoilers, it's from 1981, so, I don't know, go and watch it, nerds, um, is that at the end of that movie, Ash is presumed maybe left for dead. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit undecided. And so I've recently come around on the idea that maybe what happens is, you know, the evil spirit lost, and so it restarted again. And that and would it, fit it just perfectly sort of, into this this ridiculous world of chaos and madness. Where then, like, you know, by the time you hit the third movie, he travels back in time, and it turns out that, like, you know, one of the key time periods in history, England was, like, being invaded by the by the the the, the creatures of the Necronomicon, you know, these these demons from hell. Um an army of darkness is an entirely different type of movie it's my favorite um it was originally of course supposed to be called medieval dead um it is (laughs) a missed opportunity (laughs) (laughs) it's a pretty deranged movie um in a lot of ways like it just abandons everything about like what was the key conceit of this movie some people in a cabin in the woods and it says well ash is our character and this book can do whatever. So what if it just did whatever? I and mean, it, it for, sends him it's back him through and time. It's him and his trusty companion, the chainsaw. Like, those are his only, chainsaw hand, yeah. Those are the only characters that matter here. And his boomstick. And his boomstick, of course. How could I forget? The, the film, This is, that's what I mean. I mean, it's an unserious franchise. And then you get to, like, the 2013 one, which is this, like, just as funny but also profoundly sickening 
kind oh, of experience. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, so I think that the 2013 one is doing whatever the, the one from 1981 felt like for people in 1981. Like, I think that's fair. You know, obviously, like, we're looking at this with, you know, 2020 vision, literally. And I think that these films are just, you can see the makeup. You can, you can feel the wires. You know, it's really good. It's really funny. Um, but this thing is absolutely horrifying. When she licks the knife and her splits her own tongue, ha! it's disgusting. It's fan. It's so good. No, and I think that there, what I do think is impressive is that, like, even from 81 onward, there are legitimate moments where I go, that is unsettling. Like, that is creepy. Um, across all of the movies. But for sure, you know, like, the 2013 one is probably one of the, the, the most, um funny and also grotesque you know combined experiences ever put to screen i think that some of the funniest moments of that film are just how fucking stupid everybody is i'm sorry i'm sorry this movie is like people just like stumbling upon you know the old film is people stumbling upon like the necronomicon basically stalking them like she's already haunted from day from day one it's not even when they read the book this guy this guy in the new film is like actively like let me fucking make notes you know yeah i'm doing some i'm doing some stuff you know i'm doing some some uh detective you know, dan stuff to try and figure out how to here, read this text out loud over here sherlock holmesing it and it's you know he, he deserves every bit of torture that he gets it's it's uncalled for at a certain point and i think that that's what this movie hits a lot at you know it's it it gets it gets unnecessary and i think that that's but that's it's the brand it's called evil dead rise it's about you know demons possessing people and 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 tr- forests becoming alive and it's 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 absolute nonsense yeah but that's the thing that's the thing that i think um franchises like like this and like like Freddy Krueger do really well is this weird this living in this chaos zone mm-hmm. where like anything is possible but it's all stemmed on this one... There are no bad ideas. I want to hear what everyone has to say. Exactly, kind of, exactly. Uh... It's fully committed, and I think that that's the thing that I love the most about the old and the new. It's, it's, it's a fully committed franchise, regardless all of how good... All at all times. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of how good the idea is, it's, it's there. You know, and I, it doesn't repeat. It, it does. It does repeat themes, but it doesn't repeat exactly. And I think that that's also really fun, that we don't just get... You know, the the same slapstick um stuff, especially from like, you know, our we get we get hints of the original in the in the remake, but I think that it, it goes so much darker, so much more twisted. I love it. No, for sure. Um and I guess with all that said, we should jump into what we're here to talk about tonight, which is Evil Dead Rise, the newest yes. Evil Dead film that just came out. Um, it is written and directed by Lee Cronin. The premise is a twisted tale of two estranged sisters whose reunion is cut short by the rise of flesh-possessing demons thrusting them into primal battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. That was the longest sentence. No, and it was also a mouthful. Like, yeah, it didn't yeah, yeah, read yeah. easy. No, no, no. They just slapped some commas in there like that was enough. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Like, really had to work for it. Mm. Uh, our, our cast includes uh, Mirabai Peace, uh, Richard Crouchley, Anna Mar... Ma- Anna Mare? Anna Marie. It's probably um, Anna Marie. Thomas. It's a double E, I apologize. Uh, Lily Sullivan, uh, Noah Paul, and Alyssa Sutherland. Oh, and Nell Fisher. Uh, and I guess with all that said, I'll, I'll take it away. You know, you sort of, I guess, were more of our, our lead off on the, on the Evil Dead franchise discussion, so I'll, I'll kick off Evil Dead Rise as a discussion. Fantastic. Um, what did I want from this movie? What a, what does an Evil Dead movie need to have? It needs to be grisly in its own way, because even though the 81 one, you know, is in its own way, you know, obviously much uh, a dated film in, in some ways now, it also is just piling on heaps of blood, and it is insanely, you know, gross in its own way. Some of the stop-motion decay. Um, so you want that sort of effect. 
you need some camp. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you, you definitely want whoever it is that's at the core of it to win the day. Like, there's never been a, a lead, obviously, whether it be Ashley or, or any of his, his cohorts in the TV show or, or here in uh, the new version of films in the 2013 film where it's the brother and the sister duo. You know, you want someone to win the day here. Um, and there, there how, always has been someone who really succeeds out, right? Like the sister in the 2013 one, excellent winner. Um, oh yeah, she walks away like a champ. Great final girl. And, and she spends so much of the movie possessed that then when she comes back, excellent stuff. You know, really good. No, yeah, and she has to play catch up. You don't know if she's awake in the possession. You have no idea what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so really good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um... And and then beyond that, um, you know, yeah, it does have to have the chainsaw. Um, yeah, the, I mean, these are pretty much like the the bread and butter things that a, an Evil Dead movie needs. Beyond that, surprise me, is yeah. kind of like my metric for going into something for Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and this hit the marks for me. It is. Um, a it's it's not a long movie at all hour 37 um and so it moves at a really good clip there are some really surprising ways in which that um the movie takes the new scenery because we leave the the cabin in the woods behind Mm -hmm. um and like the only time that we've ever really done that is of course army of darkness and the tv show Mm-hmm. And so if we discard the TV show, then the only time that we've ever done this in the movies is Army of Darkness. And they went into medieval <laughs> England! So, like, this is modern times, regular city location. Mm-hmm. And I think that they really did a lot with the location. I don't think that they did everything that they could have, but I also think that that's partly uh, a budgetary constraint. Um, because ultimately they leave it very claustrophobic with everything is, is tied to the single floor. Um, for me, some of the best things about this movie are largely the cast. I did really enjoy every major player in this ensemble. Um, there are maybe some that I enjoyed more or less than others, but I, I did enjoy everyone for the most part, and I think that they did what the script called for them to do. Um, how thankless or not that is, is up to you to decide. <laughs> Um, beyond that, I also really enjoyed, honestly, the opening because we start out with the classic premise. We start out with a cabin in the woods. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's one of, honestly, if I had like one sort of issue, if you will, with this movie is that, um, one of my favorite parts of the movie was the cabin in the woods opening. It was so insane. It delivered so big and that big, splashy, evil dead rise yeah, across she's the literally screen floating out of the is water. incredible oh. stuff. Fantastic. And so for me, like, that's some of the part of the movie that's, like, the most seared in my brain mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. the opening. And then there's the apartment. Yeah, and then we, <laughs> and then we jump to days later, unrelated people, and... Um, I really enjoy a lot of a, a lot of the movie and a lot of the character work, and I think that it's nice and grisly. I think that at times it's a little bit too clean. We'll jump into that a little bit later. Um, and I think that at times it doesn't go to the same sort of camp places or, or um, uh, ultra-grotesque places mm. that are some of the best parts of both franchises. And I think that for me, that's ultimately where it ends up making it a little bit lesser than some of the other entries, is that it never necessarily hits all the way into each extreme. There's gallons of blood, but is it gross? Mm. Kill Bill has gallons of blood. Kill Bill isn't necessarily gross. Evil Dead 2013 is gross. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I'm living with a little bit. Um, and also I do have some issues to a degree with the ending, which we will get into later. But that's kind of where I will leave things off, and now I'll, I'll pitch it off to you. Dear, what did you think of Evil Dead Rise? All right. Um, 
I, I, I totally agree with, with, with what you're talking about over here. Um, I really enjoyed this film. I thought that this was a fun ride. We watched this in theaters, which is always an experience to watch. Oh, and it was uh, nice and big and shaking. It was oh, an yeah. RPX experience, and so it was a good projection. You felt that shit vibrating through oh, the scene. Oh, yeah. It, no, was it, was great. A, it was It was such a, such a good time, you know. Um, had, a, had a blast. And this film, I think, um, does a lot of things that I wanted it to do. Um, I guess I'll go into that. Um, I was excited about the idea about this film not being in the cabin of the woods, you know, the, the classic trope. I was really curious of how they were going to, you know, feed in all of the, the classic Isms. evil dead things. Yeah. You know, how are they going to get the book? You know, how is the spell going to be cast? You know, who's going to be... Obviously, it was the mom. It's, it's always the mom. It's the, <laughs> the mom is the possessed one. Um, I but, enjoy know. Maggot Mommy, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, like, the, and then there's the, the new element that we have is children. You know, how are how is this franchise going to handle kids? And so there were a lot of things that I was really interested in in going into this film and honestly for the most part like it, it succeeded i think that you're totally fair i think that um there were some places where i was like we could have seen more and we could have gone further um but i also i liked the the whole setup i loved the um i loved the the opener i thought that, that was fantastic ah oh, man if i ripped her head clean off of it mm, gold uh i i audibly was like oh in the film um i wish that i liked um our our leading sister more mm -hmm. um i'm not i don't know her name um i think it's lily sullivan beth yes see see so i don't even remember their names Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. I. I guess I wish I liked her more. Um. I felt like our sister chemistry wasn't wasn't very strong. Um. And I know that they're, they're supposed to be estranged, but um. I just I felt like they were like really throwing in this like their estranged relationship. And I know that um horror movies always have to have their 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 certain lead up into into the actual goods of the why you come you know is for all the the blood the guts and the gore but like you know i felt like we we rushed over what a few more minutes have done you better it's an hour 37 so to get to an hour 45 is only eight more minutes i think Would that eight more minutes have changed that opinion for you potentially? i think i think potentially yes i think so i think that um the right eight minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I felt like all of our players were really good. I just felt like they were having a hard time together. Yeah, and I think that maybe, to your point, some of that is the fact that we we rushed certain things. Yeah. By the time we get to the first dinner, mm -hmm. it feels where, where things start to go awry. It feels like we've had no time with these people. No, yeah. We spend more time with the haunted version of the sister... Mm -hmm. And I guess that's also to a degree a case with some of the other movies, but I feel like they spent better um, better use of their mileage because they also didn't take up part of their beginning with a, a disjointed scene. No, that's that's fair. That's very fair. That's a that's a very fair point. I, um, I will let you continue on with your. Um, opinion no, I do. I, I do agree, though. I do think that a more minutes would have would have helped a lot because also, again, to your point, they had this whole beginning part that 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 killed a lot of my time that I could have been using for my other things. I know, that's um, probably what six minutes. Mm hmm. Six to ten. And like, how, how many people live on this floor? Number one. That's 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 beside the point. But I just felt like also like we were. Of course, a, an Evil Dead has to have, like, a limited cast of people. Mm hmm But, like, I felt like the, the idea of having it in this apartment building, you know, this, this high-rise thing that has an elevator, you know, I thought that would be really interesting because, you know, maybe we could, we could focus on, you know, like, it spreading through the, the, the building itself. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and leaching into different floors and eventually, you know, this, this becoming, like, a virus that takes over the city, truly. Mm -hmm. You know, but instead it or, was very focused. Or it's focused. all even maybe just contained into this building, you know. But it it's this thing where, like, 
it is almost like a an army of darkness thing where you've got like random ass people who have no idea what they're doing suddenly fending off grandma yeah 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 because the the whole premise of the the book is like you know that the book has rules and we always go through each each movie has told us very clearly that like you know um you can you can decapitate them or you can set them on fire fire. you can also stop their heart yeah you can you can bury them you can bury them alive yeah and we've got all of these things that are how you can you can stop the evil, you know, that people have passed down. And this movie said, fuck all of that. None of that, none of that matters anymore. None of that exists anymore. None of that is real. This is a virus that is spreading. And then it didn't do that. Yeah. Because, again, it's, it's so focused on this one family that it's not even real. I, th- I, w- I thought that because the building was supposed to be condemned and they were getting kicked out of there, then maybe there was nobody else. Living in it. In it. But it seemed pretty full. It, and that, yeah, yes. But we also didn't take advantage of that. Exactly, exactly. So I felt like we we really had, like, an opportunity, but because we needed to wish Wishwashy. Exactly, exactly. Like, I really felt like we could have leaned into the environment that we were in further. Did you use it? Kind of. Did you use it to the fullest extent? No. Did you also make it abandoned to make it concede to your your narrative decision that it's on its way out? Mm-hmm. Also, no. Yeah. Um, and to your point, one thing that I did actually enjoy about it was that some of what they set up, they, they lay out a lot of um, false leads. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the characters that you think are going to be with you for a while are not. Yeah. And some of the things that you think are going to be plot points are not. And some of the things that you think are going to be things that help our characters are not. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy that sudden, complete unraveling Mm -hmm. of where you think the plot is Mm -hmm. going. And that, for me, was probably one of the real, real strong suits. But going back to your point, and I am going to now start to tie into some um, spoiler things a little bit here. At the very, very end of the movie, and I won't get too deep into it, we reveal how the beginning of the movie and the end of the movie relate to each other. Because it's a flashback, right? We, If you see this movie, this is not too much of a spoiler. We literally, we finish the opening sequence, we jump back days earlier, is like the, the title card. Yeah. Um, so how does the end of the movie relate to the beginning of the movie? Because none of the characters are relative to each other. Yeah. And that's one of the cheapest moments for me of the entire movie. Is once we finally learn how A and B are related, I absolutely hate it. Because for me, to your point, it's a complete dismissal of the rules. Mm-hmm. It's a complete abandonment of everything that we kind of understand about the rules. And even if we try to make the conceit that like, oh, it's kind of like Evil Dead 1, where the sister was maybe possessed before the book was read. It still doesn't work because essentially the implication is that there is some sort of full reawakening of the evil at the end without anyone reading the book and that's one of the key things Mm -hmm. here to your point that you talked about like you need the book to be read yeah and then we find out that none of our victims in the beginning read the book in their cabin in the woods (laughs) and and like it, it it such for me was like a real bummer point because like And, you know, I I don't mean to sound like a fucking Randy from Scream about this shit, but, like, this shit has rules, you know? Like, there is a formula at play here, and that's also why the magic of this person matters, or the magic of this evil matters. The moment that we throw that shit out the window, it's like, oh, well, then... I guess everyone's just fucked? I don't know. the thing (laughs) is, is also, we're following parts of the rules as well. Yeah, bits. You know, we're following the the, the 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 book had to be read in the first place. You know, basically, like, he's playing the tapes. Yes. You know, something has to be, t- and, and that's not something that's from the beginnings as well, you know, to, to, to yada yada over the fact that, like, this isn't, isn't, it's supposed to be a scholarly text, 
You know, it's mm. supposed to be the book of the dead, like the book, you know. The Pope's been trying to get his hands on this kind of book of the dead. Yeah. And so, like, perfect. We've got these old tapes, which b- bullshit on how on how he gets those things. You know, it's 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 the it's the worst setup I have ever seen for the the book and the the, the the stuff. You know, no, they cheat in a lot of really lazy ways. That's fair. And I thought that that was that was such a bummer because every after that moment, I was like, I hate this character and I hate this plot line because what are you doing? Yeah. Of all of the things, because it, 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 like you, you find it in a in a in an abandoned cell, like an abandoned like, um um oh gosh, it's like a bank cell. Yeah. And so like that's the only thing that you take out of there. Yeah. Really? There's some old records and a ratty looking book with some teeth on it that you found in a crypt of a dead person. Like, come on! I think that I would have accepted it. And being, the book like, opens up when blood touches it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's got it's got the, it's it's literally the book from it's Harry like, Potter. Yeah, you know it's it's, it's uh, it's the um, uh, the Beast book from the third one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I just I was just like I, fucking it made vagina dentata mouth. It it made me so mad, um, and I think that, that was probably again because like again they're following the steps of the possession and even like when people pass on the possession like i was like oh you know something happens you either get a fluid it's like a zombie apocalypse mm-hmm. you know you either get something of them on you and into you yeah maganami then, tattoos herself then tattoos the other one mm-hmm. boom or or you know sometimes they do the the whole like vomit exchange horrible thing mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. or whatever it's just all about getting the virus the 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 it into you yeah into your essence and they didn't do that and then they're like but also the 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 people in the hallway that die also have it now as well even though they were just torn to shreds yeah they were just ripped to ribbons you know there was no passage happening they were just sacrifices basically yeah and i guess that's where i'm like i don't i don't understand i guess the the, and once you throw away some of the rules then there are no rules and it's harder to you know i guess it's harder to, to to understand the fear yeah if if the fear is infinite mm-hmm. you know because then you're trying to pull it too much i think that the rules have structure yeah you know and that's you know that is part of the issue to your point you know we talked about it being a little bit like nightmare that is also where some of the nightmare franchise got off the rails yeah it's this was infinite. the way in which that like freddie could just perpetually, 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 perpetually. But here we had, like, a, a clean, it was almost like Scream. We had a clean device. Yeah. Ghost faces, whoever is the killer. You know, what happens? Someone reads the book. Yeah. Boom. Said and done. Um, and so to then start to abandon some of those clean, simple rules. hmm does start to really undermine the narrative and the and the strength of it. And I know that that sounds like such like a, a fucking Urkel bookwormish thing to to say, I guess, about a narrative, but like it's kind of like if suddenly an alien didn't need a face hugger. Yes. Okay. It could just suddenly pop out a xenomorph baby from an egg. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where we're cutting out a key conceit here about this entire thing no, which is yeah. that the the thing needs a host the evil needs a host no and like maybe maybe this is 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 something that is like connected to the end of of the the remake you know maybe yeah. maybe that is is because we get all five of our souls you know that the evil is unleashed you it's know maybe more powerful now yeah you know like maybe that is what this is but then but then i still call crap on the the recordings that we hear because then in the recordings they say that there is no way to defeat this thing yeah you know and those recordings are supposed to be from like the 20s or something so like and maybe this is like a you know they say that there are like three different versions of the book oh and so maybe, maybe this is a different this is, version of since the book since this is a different version of the book it has different rules Yes, but I'm I also will... not sure that that was made clear. But enough. then we have to call it something different than the Because I just assumed that everyone just was re- repeating the same writing, literally across every book. It was like uh, an old illumination text. Yeah, yeah, 
it's of, like the, of, the original versions of the Bible, you know. Yeah, Everybody where a whole bunch of books. monks were just transcribing. Exactly, exactly. But also, I guess, to that point, you know, some people say that there are some slight differences in old, you know, monastery sort of texts about the Bible because sometimes, you know, some people couldn't write. But then I think we should lean into that. Yeah, and we didn't do that well enough. No, yeah, I think that if we're going to lean into the, like the, this whole idea, then I want, I then I want, I want more. I want more understanding of the book itself because that's also that's the whole How, thing. Why were there three of them made? Who made them? Because also, if we're always just getting it from from and why do they have sources, three different rules? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, bring me something. You know, a, a demon from beyond. That actually is going to sit me down and tell and me what's... speak. Yeah, yeah, instead of just doing all the stuff, you know, g- give me a leader. You know what, that would be really interesting, would be if there was some sort of character that did actively, like, engage in pagan ritual mm-hmm. as a part of their daily life. And so when they came across this book and suddenly someone from their group unleashed something... Then you could have this person go, we can summon something to tell us. No, yeah. You know, what's happening here. That could be a really interesting way to throw in a a different element, you know, as well into this story. Because also, like, there are people that in real life, you know, look at um, the, 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 the dark arts, you know, if you will, pagan ritual, uh, witchcraft, Wiccan, that sort of stuff you could easily have some sort of character mm-hmm. that isn't a babe in the woods. Yeah. About it, the neck. This is the what? You know, you found yeah, the yeah, what? Yeah, 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 No, 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 no. Oh, Everyone's gosh. such a fucking, what is it? About this book. <laughs> we, need, we need the goddamn monks from Fifth Element that are like been studying this for an eternity so that way when they see the yeah. Fifth Element, they are like, oh, we know exactly what we're doing. Or we need like a Randy. Exactly. We need who's something. like, you know, who who understands that this is the ring tape. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, you don't fuck with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I will even accept like a legacy at this point to like yeah. somebody, somebody, even if it's just like a they made a YouTube video. Yeah, you know about it. Like, and it's a it's a video of Ash online and he's on truth social or something you know and he's like guys aliens are real and everybody's like yada 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 and that's why they pushed him onto this horrible horrible network you know Mm -hmm. no come on do it no i i think that they're you know i think that if you want to and apparently they are going to continue the evil dead franchise and i think that i'm still on board and let me tell you I think that maybe I sound very critical of the movie. I actually really enjoy it. And as far as I'm concerned, even if this is the worst Evil Dead movie... It's still a great ride. And it's still better than, like, the worst Friday the 13th movie, the worst Nightmare on Elm Street movie, the worst Scream movie. Evil Dead Rise is still, in my opinion, better than the worst of all of those. Oh, no, because there were moments in this movie where I was genuinely freaked out. But I creeped always, out I, on on the edge of my seat. But I always felt like they they dropped to your point that you made earlier. I felt like they dropped the ball right before it got too gruesome. Yes. So because there are children in this movie, I think that part of this movie ends up being very squeaky clean and almost sterile. And I think that it's partially because of children, also partially because of the direction. Mm-hmm. I don't think that the director makes a condemned building feel as disgusting as it might be able to. The same way that that cabin in the 2013 remake feels feels disgusting to inhabit. You wouldn't want to stay there for the night. And I and I loved the 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 the, the twists on the the whole like the first person he ends up getting you know trapped in a place like I loved the fact that like instead of her being you know trapped in the basement like in the original she's trapped in the hallway like I think that that's a really fun gag but then I feel like because our our landscape is so small mm-hmm. and so condensed the apartment. You know, we can't even go outside. Mm-hmm. We don't even have the the luxury of just being stranded. They're stranded in this like it's almost like a COVID stranded Mm -hmm. where it's like, I I wasn't quite sure how we were going to stretch an entire movie's worth of these people surviving. When you're like in a two, three bedroom apartment. 
No, for sure. And, like, I think that, you know, um, Halloween 2, the original Halloween 2 idea was that uh, Michael Myers was going to chase Lori to, like, a Chicago high-rise apartment where she was living. And I think that that almost works better because you can just have Michael kill his way up. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we finish the story where? On the rooftop. Mm-hmm. You know, where she either jumps or kicks him off. Mm-hmm. With something like Evil Dead, where it's like a vampire, right? The The evil is like a vampire. You invite it into where you are. Yeah, vampire zombies. To lock it into the floor and lock her into where our basement is the floor and they're trapped in the floor. But also, we talked about this. No one uses the elevator. No one uses the stairs. But the stairs are apparently out. And the elevator is blocked. And we go an entire night in a populated city without anyone needing the stairs of the elevator. I mean, and this for is where fuck's part sake, of people the are evil, dying. This is where part of the evil being confined to a single floor is a problem. Scream 6 does a better job of taking evil to the city. Yes. Than Evil Dead Rise does. Yes, 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 It's not that it's a bad movie, but it does not execute on one of its most interesting conceits. Yeah, because this is, it's it's literally a plague story that has condensed itself to ten people. Yeah. And what if, like, the, what if, what if the Necronomicon has such rigid rules about taking all the souls of the place that it inhabits, such that, like, you know, you get a, a scene of some sort of mailman trying to come and deliver something and like seeing something like insanely crazy but him somehow being on like the safe side because he was never like a part of it at the exactly beginning. he can't be a part of it yeah you know um and and he ends up seeing like some insane shining shit and he's just like i'm just gonna leave now you know, like Kitty Genovese sort of, you know, not my pigs, not my farm kind of no, problem. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, like, there are other people in this apartment building. They're not all on this floor. And so people are getting absolutely, you know, brutally murdered. This is a horror Gunshots film. are going off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody said, that sounds crazy. An entire... And slept through the night? One of the entire elevators isn't working. And two, both stairwells are out, not just Well, out. I guess this was my theory, was um, that all of that was purely a part of the possession. It was, it's an all an illusion. But, like, then why didn't the evil take over more of the building? Because, because, uh, because it's le- leached to these people. I don't know. There aren't yeah. any rules. There are fewer rules, that's for sure. That's right, that's right. So if you had to give Evil Dead Rise a score out of five, what would you give it? I am going to give this movie. I'm going to give this movie a three and a half. Um, I really enjoyed the ride. I think that it is so fun. But I think as as people who watch a lot of horror films, this one dropped the ball on a lot of really interesting stuff. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'm going to give it a three and a half as well. I was actually going to give it the same score. Um it drops the ball on some really, really interesting conceits. We didn't even talk about the pregnancy that I don't think that they do anything, anything that they could have. I mean, scary pregnancy is a thing. Rosemary's baby, you know, kind of shit, you know, like uh, uh, the, the Zack Snyder, James Gunn, Dawn of the Dead remake. Creepy pregnancy. I'm so mad they didn't kill that child. Is so important. And not, the, not, the, not, the, not the not the not the pregnancy the the like ten years. No, I know, I know. Creepy pregnancy is so an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that it. In they the, don't um, do anything. Yeah, the zombie baby, fantastic. And you know, maybe maybe we even could have done like a weird emotional thing where um, we tease whether or not the the demons are are being honest about whether or not she's actually going to carry it to term or not you know like we could have really like had these demons like playing very directly with her about this kind of no you yeah know. instead we and have we this like weird just like we know she's pregnant it. but 
she ends up bo- she ends up bonding with the, the last child. child left that also ends up feeling like this surrogate motherhood, but we also know that she's pregnant. No, 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 no. I understand. I just, I find it very fascinating that they throw that up in the air. They throw all this. this and they don't use it. Because it's like this weird aura of motherhood is like the theme here. You yeah. Know, our, our, our. Maggot mommy. Yeah. And all yeah. of that stuff. And so like now we have to have this woman who's like, it's like the beginning and ends and the And the kid that wanted to be mom the most ends up also being like one of the first ones to fall victim. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think that they, again, I just, I don't think that it goes anywhere. There's. We don't take scary motherhood to to the places that it can go. No, literally. And, and so I, three and a half. Yeah, three and a half. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what it gets, man. Oh, uh, hell. Um, and that's, that. I truly liked it. Like, I want people to go and see it. No, I had yeah. a good time watching it. Oh, had a blast. Great movie. The people we were in the theater with were having a good time. Absolutely worth going and seeing on the big screen. Good three and a half movie. Yes. Like, that's what I mean. Like, it's a good three and a half movie. But also, horror can have mid-movies. And also, just, I'm coming to it as a person who, even though an Evil Dead movie doesn't have to cross a high bar, there are certain things that I do want from it. No, yeah. You know, uh, and if you promise me something, follow through. Literally, I'm sorry. Um, that's that's my main thing with storytelling just in general. Like, you set me up something, you build this world, your imaginary world. Great. Every Pull world, the trigger. Yeah, every world has physics. Explain it to me and stick to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I really enjoyed this conversation. And uh, if you would like to enjoy listening to these conversations uh for me and lauren you actually will have to wait just a little while uh as things happen to change in flux as i mentioned earlier in the show uh lt and i have decided that uh it's time for different pastures and so the film buds will actually be returning to its original host the one the only henry faraday uh and his dear wife actually uh, and so we're excited to return the show to Henry. We're excited to see where it goes. I will still occasionally write for the film buds. Um, but if you want to, in the future, listen to me and Lauren, uh, we don't have a, a precise launch date right now, but sometime this summer, definitely be on the lookout for, I'm sure we can get an announcement here on the film buds, our next show, our next venture, Dirty Sexy Violent. Uh, if you know me and LT, if there is one thing that we love, it's things that are violent, grisly, disgusting, erotic. Uh, <laughs> Damn popo. <laughs> uh, showgirls. That's you know, great. That's we great. love um all of that kind of stuff, and so we we had this discussion of wanting to sit down and and reframe and and refocus and craft something that we think is is on our sort of razor's edge of where we're at our best yeah exactly something that's that's ours and so uh we're very we're very excited to return the film buds back to the person that started it originally yeah the, the man himself. the man the myth the bud that's right henry faraday and um definitely of course we will try and keep you updated on dirty sexy violent uh and signing out For the last time on the Film Buds as host and co-host, I'm Paul Davis. And I'm Lauren Davis. And it has been a true honor and a true pleasure. And we'll see you somewhere on the horizon. Bye. Bye!